I just the, the first question, the easiest, the reaction to this idea that there could be or should be between four and a half and six billion in cuts in the FY12 budget. What would that budget look like? Uh, you know, the, even with the governor's proposed cuts, you're you're hearing the the, the moans and the gnashing of teeth. Sure. Well, first off, I want to say the, the the time has long since passed for Senate Republicans to come to us with specifics on how they could reduce the budget. Four to six billion dollars, we will welcome their suggestions, good faith suggestions on how we can make those kinds of reductions. The facts are that since Governor Quinn took office in January of 2009, he's been the biggest budget cutter in Illinois history by reducing spending by three billion dollars. We have asked Republicans, Senate Republicans, for specific suggestions that we could implement. So far, we haven't received any. So within a week, I believe, they said that they're going to offer specifics. We welcome those specifics. What would state government look like? Mm -hmm. Would there be, I mean, four, six billion dollars is a lot of money in a 32 billion dollar operating fund. Sure. Uh, is, is that can you do that without lopping off social services, closing down schools? These are not just belt tightening. It seems like there, there would be a cleaver at some point. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -mm. You take a look at the re press release, and um, they mentioned that these would be difficult decisions. We have worked our best to find further efficiencies and ways to save taxpayers money. The facts are there are certain obligations in our state. For instance, pensions, pension payments, are astronomical. This year, four billion dollars, four point five. Then it goes up to five, and then over for the next couple of years. These are required payments that the state has to pay. If you just take a look at a five billion dollar payment, and we're just talking about a figure of about thirty-two billion dollars, that leaves twenty-seven billion to spend on essential services that we have here in our state: education, health care every single thing that we provide for the residents of our state. And frankly, there's hardly enough money for everyone to make everything work. When we went to, for instance, recently dealing with Department of Human Services, if you've been following that situation at all, there were protests, there were people saying, if you do this, these are human lives that you're going to be affecting. We worked with them and we were able to provide them some money from the governor's lump sum to help make up that difference. So they're still gonna have to make some reductions, but anytime we talk about reductions, we are talking about human lives, people who depend on these services, people who need these services for their well-being. But again, Governor Quinn has been the biggest budget cutter in state history. He's worked hard to find efficiencies. And if the Senate Republicans can come up with four to six billion dollars in further efficiencies, we welcome, welcome those suggestions. This was a question I've had for a long time with the governor's cut budget, the cut spending that those also coincide with years where we didn't have the money to spend. Is it, is it a budget cut? Is it walking that line to say, well, we've cut back spending, even though the money just simply wasn't there? Is that a budget cut, or is that a result of the fact that the state was just broke? I don't want to go off on, on the tangent, but that, that's the question that's always stuck in my head. Is it, is it fair to say we cut the budget when we just simply didn't have the money to spend. But we, we look at that as budget reductions for certain. We have reduced lease space. We have consolidated office space. We have reduced uh, subscriptions here in our state. We've taken furlough days that have saved tens of millions of dollars. Under Governor Quinn, we have made many, many reductions, including the biggest one, which is major pension reform. The Republicans turned a pretty firm no to the idea of borrowing to pay off the backlog of bills, mm -hmm. but a lot of this escalation of the deficit from five this year to 22 billion in FY16 just sort of rolls over that, un that, that, that backlog of unpaid bills. Yes. Uh, if, if those bills were gone, what would Illinois' fiscal situation look like? Sure, well that's our proposal, Ben. Um, the proposal that we sent forth, excuse me, my phone, uh, the proposal that we sent forth shows that we will eliminate our deficit over time. The uh, first year with the projection, it does show that we'd have about a billion dollar deficit. We have been operating in a state that has about a 13 billion dollar deficit. So we've been dealing with this deficit and the proposal that we set forth reduces that deficit down to about a billion dollars for this upcoming fiscal year. How much of the opposition to borrowing comes from a 
philosophical opposition to adding more debt when the state's in $5 billion hole, and how much of it, in, in the budget office's opinion, is a political strategy to get some grand bargain, if there is going to be a grand bargain, at the end of it. You know, here's the thing, Ben. No one likes the idea of borrowing, but the facts are we already owe this money. We have a backlog of bills. Providers have been waiting months and months for payment. We feel they need to be paid immediately. They provide services to some of Illinois' most vulnerable residents. They need payment. Our proposal is to restructure this debt. This is money we already owe. This is not new borrowing. And we would restructure that debt at a lower interest rate to get these vendors paid immediately. I read that they are, Senate Republicans are not for this plan. We're going to continue to work with them to let them know that we feel this is the best plan. Again, we are open to suggestions. If they want to put forth some suggestions on how we can get vendors paid immediately, but right now, after examining a lot of proposals, we feel this is the best way to get vendors paid immediately. There's There's been talk, COGFA's had some various revenue projections, sure. there were new ones this morning, yes. uh, maybe even $2 billion more than, yeah. the numbers The numbers move. Mm -hmm. The House has said 32 mm -hmm. or 33, something, something, something in there, something 32 or 33. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the... And I think the... I think the Democrats, uh, Senate Democrats said 34 or something. Yeah, it's, it, how, how do you guys go forward sure, yeah. when nobody really knows the number? And, and is, there, is there an expectation that everybody's going to be on the same page come back? Well, we hope so. That's what, <laughs> we, that's what we're hoping for. We set forth our proposal. We believe that our projections were actually conservative. Um, we've seen the others... Uh, their projections and, and you know the budget is an ongoing dialogue and and we look forward to having robust debate on the budget and these numbers to come up with a concrete number to to find the best fiscal solution for everyone in Illinois last question I promise if there is more money if the revenue mm -hmm. projections that you're using are conservative COGFA's numbers show there are more mm -hmm. will that money be spent will that avoid these cuts or will it go towards the backlog as Republicans have said they would like to see to maybe get them to play ball? Well, at this point, it's a little bit too early to comment on that. Their ideas, their projections are just coming in. We've put forth our projection. This is going to be, um, you know, a daily process that we're going to work with them through the end of May to make sure that we come up with the best solution for everyone.